Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Good morning, everyone. Hare Krishna, Vijaya Pandit in Italy. Good morning. I know it's early for you. Thank you for attending. Uh, our weekly programs, and I want to welcome everyone. Here I'm in Yotepec, Mexico. It's quite an interesting experience traveling here. <clears throat> I'm not sure how I ended up here, but somehow or other by Krishna's arrangement, <clears throat> I'm here learning about the uh, world of Krishna consciousness in Mexico, which is far away. <clears throat> it's interesting to note, you showed Anandana Prabhu, how much Prabhupada traveled. And... Uh, how he was so renounced as a servant of his spiritual master. Because traveling is different than staying in one place where you get roots. When you travel, you have no roots. You go with the wind, you travel. Or in the modern age, you go with the plains, you go you land somewhere and you set up temporarily and then you go. Of course, this is the business of the sannyasi because the sannyasi has no residence. The material world for him is when he takes sannyas order is considered to be dead. He's no longer living in the material world, when you look at the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, who, by the way, were very wealthy men, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, uh, the others Goswamis, were very successful people. But despite their success, they renounced everything to go with Lord Chaitanya. So when you read Chaitanya Charitamrita from Srila Prabhupada's translations, you get a real profound insight into what our responsibility is as devotees in this disciplic succession. That we are following in the footsteps of the great devotees like Srila Prabhupada and studying his life very carefully in order to understand how we should act. Whatever great men do, common men will follow. Whatever standards they set by exemplary acts, the whole world pursued. pursues. I was discussing that with Yashoda Nandana Prabhu yesterday after the class. <clears throat> what insights we are all getting from reading even Prabhupada's diaries, how he meticulously managed his money, 15 cents for bus fare, uh, 30 cents for butter, all these different uh, <clears throat> items that he noted down in his diary. <clears throat> now, how much insight is it to see that he spent 15 cents on a bus fare. Well, <clears throat> it tells us he was going places, he was getting up, he was going, he wasn't sleeping, he wasn't wasting his time in frivolous pursuits. He was methodically working on the mission 
to establish a temple in New York City. He was sending out letters to his god brothers in India, trying to get them to help, working on foreign exchange ideas, how he could bring money from India because there were restrictions for that. He was uh, <clears throat> constantly holding meetings every day almost <clears throat> and preaching. And by the way, Sean Evans in Michigan, I wanted to remind you that you can hear these lectures by going online and getting a flavor for how Prabhupada was preaching. You know, everyone has an opinion. We know that whether it's a political agenda, you know, you can be a Republican, you can be a Democrat, you can, in Canada, you can be a liberal or you can be a conservative or an NDP. These are all different political opinions. But remember this, Prabhus, we have no opinion, none. This is not a group that has opinion. We're like parrots. We just repeat what we hear. So when you <clears throat> listen to these lectures given by Srila Prabhupada, <clears throat> you try to emulate how he's presenting the philosophy, use his examples, you study his logic, how he puts everything together. Because remember this, Sean, Prabhupada is an avatar. Prabhupada is not an ordinary man. Prabhupada is a representative of Bhakti Siddhanta in a chain of disciplic succession from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How much more exalted is that? How much? There's nothing greater than this opportunity that all of us in this group, the Prabhupada Disciples Association, you showed an under Prabhu. I got a uh, <clears throat> message from one of our members yesterday. He thanked us for the class. He said, I finally understood who I am. We're not Ritviks, we're not Prabhupada Nugas. It's just like people refer to me sometimes. Oh, you're a Ritvik. <laughs> that is an insult to a Prabhupada disciple, first and second initiated by his divine grace, to all of a sudden call us by some kind of term that's used for initiation, a system for making more Prabhupada disciples. And that is our goal. We want more people, especially the younger people with our group, when they feel so motivated, it's them that initiates, not us. And that commitment to Prabhupada, that commitment to the process of devotional service, and that commitment to the Sankirtan mission Vijaya Pandit in Italy, that commitment is your initiation. Of course, there should be a formal fire sacrifice. And we have so many Prabhupada disciples in our group, in our Brahminical Council, that we're capable and quite authorized to do that. And bless that person with a spiritual name and an opportunity to carry on with Krishna consciousness throughout their life. Remember this, it's not who starts the race, it's who finishes the race. That's the success story of a devotee in the Krishna consciousness movement. Who finishes the race? Yeah, so many people joined in the early days, and I'm gonna stop right now and carry on with the reading. I apologize, sorry. Glory to Srila Prabhupada. On April 19th, <clears throat> Tuesday, April 19th, 1966. So we're going to read through this, and you can all get a feeling for Prabhupada's pace here. 
sunrise 5, 10 a.m., sunset 6.50 p.m., <clears throat> moonrise 4.57. Amavasya, today I went to see Dr. J.K. Banerjee, but he was not in his office. I left on his table the matter for press report. No letter received. Expenditure bus fare, 45 cents. Three trips on the bus. <clears throat> Wednesday, the 20th of April, sunrise 5.08 a.m., sunset 6.51 p.m., moonrise 6.48 p.m., Pratipad paid Paul $1 for expense. This Paul was a nut, by the way. Today I took my meals at Dr. Mistress place. I took back the TR and tried for its repair as a tape recorder. Without any success, expenditures for bus fare, 45 cents, 45 cents. Even a meeting at 7 to 4 p.m., only four persons attended. The collection was $4. On Thursday, April 21st, sunrise 5.06 a.m., sunset 6.52 p.m., moonrise 7.58, Guicha, bus fare 30 cents. I paid Paul $22, and the expenditures was two thirty. dollars On Friday, the 26th of April, <clears throat> sunrise 5.05 a.m., sunset 6.53 p.m., moonset 9.09, Tritia, bus fare 45 cents. Again, three, three bus fares. Paul paid a <clears throat> dollar, and expenditures was $1.45, so he's contributing to the where he's staying on the Bowery now. In the evening, five gentlemen attended and the contribution was $4. So five people came. You can see he's not writing much, but he's keeping track. This will change, of course, as his mission begins to expand. Saturday, April 23rd, <clears throat> sunrise 5.04 a.m. Sunset 6.55 p.m., moonset 10.20, Chaturi. Paul paid $2. The bus fare was 15 cents. Expenditures was 2.15. Today I went to Ananda Ashram at noon. Dr. Mishra paid all my expenditure for going. And here, look, <clears throat> I put a picture up here. Beautiful picture. Prabhupada in solitude in New York City. In solitude, devotee lives <clears throat> in the mind <clears throat> and heart of his spiritual master. He does not live in the mind and heart of himself. He renounces everything for the satisfaction of the spiritual master's mission. <clears throat> we'll go one more Sunday, April 24th. <clears throat> Thank you, Vincott. Sunrise, 5.02 a.m., 5.60.56 p.m., moon sets, 11.31, Panchami. Today I remained <clears throat> the whole day at the Ananda Ashram, came back in the evening. Paul was not in the apartment. Yeah. Expenditure bus fare, 15 cents. Received two letters at 72nd, one from Vrindavan, and the other from Secretary of President talked with Ms. Sulone Richter, 493 Lincoln Road, Brooklyn, New York, 1123-857-3409. You can call that. This probably doesn't exist anymore. This person is probably long gone as we march forward in time. So everyone, please use your time intelligently, like you are by attending these programs. Thank you very much. It means all the world to us. Prabhupada disciples, all of us that are coming together, that's showing some unity of purpose and protecting the legacy, Sean, of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the Sankirtan movement. We'll move forward with Shoshona Nandana Prabhu, who's in Twain Heart, California, with the Srimad Bhagavatam class. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Thank you.
जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी
अध्यायों को स्पात प्रबंध जब बड़ी ब्राजन आचार्य सत्तर सदस्य मौल मुक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी प्रभुवादी जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णविंद की जय रामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद से अद्वैत राधा शिवाषादि गौर भक्तविंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गौ गोपीनाथ शाम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरिवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नवदीप धाम की जय गंगा माई की जय जमुना माई की जय तुलसी देवी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय स्वामी तो भक्तविंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरी स्थितिया समर ऑल ग्लोरी स्थितिया समर ऑल ग्लोरी स्थितिया समर थैंक यू वेरी मच ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ माय लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण द सन ऑफ वासुदेव द ऑल परवेडिंग पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड I offer my respectful obeisances unto you from Sri Mad Bhagavatam one one one. Narayanam namaskritya. Narayanam namaskritya. Naram cheva narottamam. Naram cheva narottamam. देवी सरस्वती व्यास देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जा मुदीर तथो जा मुदीर वन शुड अट द मीन्स ऑफ कॉन्क्वेस्ट श्रीमद्भागवता आफ्टर आफरिंग रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबीएसेंसेस वन to the personality of godhead narayana to to the nara narayana rishi who is the supermost human being three to the mother saraswati the goddess of learning in four to shrila vyasadev the author welcome everyone to this reading and discussion i'm having some technical issues with the main computer today some really on the cell phone kindly forgive if i'm not able to function as normal welcome everyone to this wonderful reading and discussion on shrimad bhagavatam we will be reading from the original 1962 new delhi edition and before we begin we will recite a few verses as we do every sunday describing the glory and significance of the shrimad bhagavatam we'll be reading from text number 16 i believe shrinvatam svakata krishna punya shravana kirtana श्री कृष्ण द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हू इज ऑल्सो द परमात्मा इन एवरी वन हार्ट एंड द बेनिफैक्टर ऑफ द ट्रूथफुल दिवोटी does cleanse the desire from material enjoyment in the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge for hearing his krishna's messages which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted next text nashta praye shobha badreshu नित्यं भगवत भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी 
by regular attendance in the Bhagavatam class or rendering service unto the pure devotees. All that is inauspicious in the heart of a candidate becomes destroys almost to nil. And thus, loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, comes into being an irrevocable fact. Tadara jastamo bhava kamalo bhada yaschaye chitaye tera navidam sitam satve prasidati. As soon as irrevocable loving service is fixed up in one's heart, at that time the effects of the nature's mode of passion and ignorance such as lust, desire, and hankerings do disappear from one's heart, and he becomes fixed up in the mode of goodness, which makes him completely happy. Evam prasanna manasu bhagavad bhakti yugataha bhagavad tattva vijnanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate. Thus, when one is positively fixed up in the mode of unalloyed goodness, the enlivened minded man affected by contact of devotional service of the Lord can positively know scientific knowledge of the personality of God in, in the stage of liberation from all material association. We will be reading a few texts from a book, a booklet that was compiled by His Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. This is called the Gaudiya Kanta R. This describes the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is from chapter two. And we'll be reading from text number 16, which is a quote from the Madhya Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 22, text 15 and 16. Chaitanya, oh, it may have been as Chaitanya Bhagavata, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, text 15 and 16. Sabe Purusharta Bhakti Bhagavati Hai. Prema Rupa Bhagavata Chariveda Kai Chariveda Dadi Bhagavata Matilen Shuke Kailenu Parikshita Srimad Bhagavatam speaks of the highest goal of life, devotional service, divine love of Krishna. According to all the Vedas, Srimad Bhagavatam is the very form of divine love. The four Vedas are like yogurt, but the Srimad Bhagavatam is like butter. The churner of this butter is Shukadev Goswami, and the eater of this butter is Parikshita Maharaja. 2.17 Krishna Tulya Bhagavata Vibhu Saravashraya Prati Shloke Prati Akshare Nana Artha Koya this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 24, text 318. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 24, text 318. Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam is as great as Krishna himself, the Supreme Lord, and the shelter of everything. In each and every verse and syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam, there are multifaceted meanings, for it is as infinite as Krishna. Next, from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Chaitanya Bhagavata, Madhya Lila, chapter 22, text 81. Bhagavata Tulasi Gangaya Bhaktajani. 
चतुर्ता विग्रह कृष्ण ए चरिस्तने वरेवर श्रीमद् भागवतम चुलासी देवी द गेंजीज एंड द डेवोटीज आर फाउंड कृष्ण इज ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट Today we are reading from the first canto fourth chapter text number 29 Tata it all english synonyms translations and purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad founder acharya of the international society for krishna consciousness also known as the krishna consciousness movement text number 29 tata pi batame dehyu yatma cha eva atmana vibhu asampanna eva bhati brahma varchasya sattamaha tata pi although bata defects me mind he certainly atma living being eva even atmana myself vibhu sufficient asampanna wanting in eva bhati it appears to be brahma varchasya of the vedantist Satamaha, the supreme translation. I am feeling still wanting, although myself is already fully equipped with everything required in the matter of Vedic principles. Purport. Undoubtedly, Sri Lavyasa Deva was complete in all the details of Vedic achievements. purification of the living being submerged in the matter is made possible by the prescribed activities in the vedas but the ultimate achievement is different unless the ultimate achievement is attained the living being even though fully equipped cannot be situated in the transcendentally normal stage Shrila Vyasadeva appeared to have lost the clue and therefore felt dissatisfaction. Text number 30. Kimva Bhagavata Dharma na prayena nirupitah priya paramaham sanam tadevahi achuta priya kimva or Bhagavata dharma devotional activities of the living being na na prayena almost nirupitaha directed priya dear paramaham sanam of the perfect beings ta eva that also he certainly Achuta infallible, Priya attractive, translation by Sri Lanka Prabhupad. Or it may be that I did not almost directed the devotional service of the Lord, which is dear both to the perfect beings and the infallible Lord. Purport. the wanting which was being felt by shrila vyasadev is expressed here in in his own words the wanting was felt from the normal condition of the living being in the devotional service of the lord unless one is not put up in the normal condition of service neither the lord nor the living being 
can become fully satisfied. This defect was felt by him when Nara the Muni, his spiritual master, reached on the spot. It is described as follows. O Magyanati Mirandasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasme Sri Gurave Namaham Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasatya Deshatarine Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya Bhakti Vedanta Namine Prasannaya Prashantaya Tasme Shri Gurabe Namaha Bhagavad Vandanam Kadyam Guru Vandana Purabakam Shiram Sarkara Yuktam Kadatehi Visheshataham Adadhana strinam danter idam yachi punaha punaha srimadrupa padam bhoja dhulishyam majan majan mani amsho bhagavato smyam sadadaso asmi sarvata tat kripa pikshakonityam Tat Prishta Shat Karumishvam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This section of Srimad Bhagavatam deals with some very important points, especially with regards to the position of Vyasadeva after compiling the entire Mahabharata in other Vedic literatures. He's feeling dissatisfied. He's not feeling complete. In Sanskrit, the technical term is called Atma Santushta, or satisfaction of the self. We see in text number 29, he is describing Brahma Varchasya Sattamaha in Sanskrit, that although he was equipped with all the necessary qualifications, for Vedanta realization. He had studied the Vedas. Prabhupada explains in a purport, undoubtedly Srila Vyasadeva was complete in all the details of Vedic achievements. This is very important point. He was very qualified, most qualified, but it seems that Prabhupada explained, Srila Vyasadeva appeared to have lost the clue and therefore felt dissatisfaction. In the next text, number 30, he explains, or it may be that I did not almost directed the devotional service of the Lord, which is dear both to the perfect beings and the infallible Lord. He properly explains, the one thing which was being felt by Srila Vyasadeva is expressed herein in his own words. 
the wanting was felt for the normal condition of the living being in the devotional service of the Lord. Unless one is put is not put up in the normal condition of service, neither the Lord nor the living being can become fully satisfied. This defect was felt by him when Nara the Muni, his spiritual master, reached on the spot. Now, this is quite significant because although Vyasadeva went to tremendous austerities, compiled the Vedas, compiled the Puranas, the Mahabharata, still he was feeling that is dissatisfied. What was that dissatisfaction? The dissatisfaction was that although he compiled such lengthy in voluminous literature, there was a lack of description of the activities of the personality of God in Sri Krishna. And this is very important. If one does not engage in the devotional service to Lord Krishna, there is guaranteed dissatisfaction. There was, there will be guaranteed lack of fulfillment. In other words, as we find in the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita is very, very clear as to what is the satisfaction. What is the proper understanding of fulfilling the position of the living being? In the Srimad Bhagavatam itself, we see in in chapter number seven, text number six, seven, and eight, it is described Anarto Pasamam Sakshad Bhakti Yogam Adokshaje Lokasya Janato Vidvams Chakre Satpata Samhitam. The material miseries of the living entity, which are superfluous to him, can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this. And therefore, the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the supreme truth. Why is this so important? Because unless one engages in devotional service, he is guaranteed not to be fully satisfied. Prophet explains in a purport, revival of the dormant affection or love of Godhead does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but it solely and wholly depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. When the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, There is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. Such mitigation of material affection does not wait for development of transcendental knowledge. Rather, knowledge is dependent on devotional service for the ultimate realization of the supreme truth. In other words, the process of bhakti, the process of devotional service under the direction and authority of the bona fide acharya will eliminate problems for the living entity. Everyone is seeking for pleasure. Everyone is seeking for satisfaction. But in the material world, it's very difficult. One of the Vaishnava Acharyas in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Govinda Kaviraj, 
has explained Kamala Dala Jala Jivana Tala Tala Bajahurun Haripada Nitiri that trying to find happiness in the material world is just like the water that is resting on a lotus flower, on a lotus leaf. It is not a very steady position. Why is it not a steady position? Because that water falls off. It stays there for very little time. This is the same position of the living entity trying to find happiness in this material world. It doesn't last very long. It is a very, very flickering position. Very dangerous position. And the only safe position is to take shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. So in text number seven, of chapter 7 of Canto 1, this is further explained. Yasyam Veshriyamanayam Krishne Parama Purushem Bhakti Rutpadyate Pumsaha Shoka Moka Bhayapaha Simply by giving oral reception to this Vedic literature, the feeling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion, and fearfulness. Now, if we look at the sequence here, this is very important. Very important. When you look in the purport by Srila Prabhupada, in the third paragraph, Prophet explains, loving devotional service to the Lord begins with hearing about the Lord. There is no difference between the Lord and the subject matter heard about him. The Lord is absolute in all respects, and thus there is no difference between him and the subject matter heard about him. Therefore, hearing about him means immediate contact with him by the process of vibration of the transcendental sound. And the transcendental sound is so effective that it acts at once by removing all material affections mentioned above. The question will come up. Person may ask, why, why should I devote so much time and energy to hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and the purports? Why is the scribe here? Hearing about him means immediate contact with him, the Supreme Lord, by the process of vibration of the transcendental sound. And the transcendental sound is so effective that it acts at once by removing all material affections mentioned above. As mentioned before, a living entity develops a sort of complexity by material association. And the illusory engagement of the material body is accepted as an actual fact. Under such false complexity, the living beings under different categories of life become illusion in different ways. Even in the most developed stage of human life, the same illusion prevails in the form of many isms and divides the loving relation with the Lord and therefore divides the loving relation between man and man. This is the potency and the power of hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam with the message of a pure devotee of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Padma Purana, it is described, Srila Prabhupada used to often quote this verse, Nama Chintamani Krishna Shetan Yarasa Vigraha 
ಪೂರ್ಣಶ್ಯ ಮುಕ್ತ ಅಭಿನ್ನತ್ವಂ ನಾಮ ನಾಮ ದಿಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಾಮ ಇಸ್ ನಾನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ನಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ there is no difference between the name krishna and the person krishna but in a condition stage of life it's very difficult to appreciate this therefore krishna reveals himself in the pages of shrimad bhagavatam in the shrimad bhagavatam itself when we look in the first canto first chapter text number 3 there is a very nice description of the power of the shrimad bhagavatam nigama kalpataror galitam phalam shukamukadam rutadravasam yutam pibata bhagavata rasamalayam muhuraho rasika bhuvi babukaha o the expert and thoughtful man please know it that shrimad bhagavatam is the mature fruit of the desired tree of vedic literatures and it, it is emanated from the lips of shuka dev goswami for this the nectarine fruit has become more tasteful although it is already readily swallowable nectarine juice which is relished by all up to those who are already liberated souls we see the shrimad bhagavatam itself is very clear in explaining the benefits and consequence of of hearing this transcendent literature because everyone in this material world is suffering everyone is engaged very hard struggling with this material senses trying to find some enjoyment unfortunately people are not satisfied just yesterday a devotee sent me a clip on youtube of some difficulties that people in the gaza strip are suffering but the point is the suffering is going on everywhere not just in the gaza strip it is unfortunate that such conflict is existing that such suffering is existing but it's not just in that location anybody who has a material body is suffering krishna explains this nicely in the bhagavad gita janma mrityu jara vyadi dukkha dosha anudarshanam that intelligence means to see the suffering of birth death old age and disease it goes on everywhere whether one is in brahma loka or in the lowest form of life there will be suffering one cannot stop the suffering the only way to remedy and correct that situation is to take shelter of krishna how does one take shelter of krishna by hearing the transcendental message of bhagavad gita in shrimad bhagavatam we see that in the fourth chapter of the bhagavad gita lord krishna explains janma karma chame divyam evam yo vetti tatvatah if one hears this transcendental message of the activities the transcendental activities of krishna's life then one will be tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mam meti sorjana one will not have to suffer again one can be relieved from that suffering one can be liberated from that suffering of this material world we've often discussed as part of these classes 
that if one hears the message of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, one will be relieved from the miseries of this material world. How one will be relieved? Simply by hearing. What mm. has to use his ears is two ears and hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, from the mouth of a pure Bhagavata, pure devotee. These purports by Srila Prabhupada, this is exactly what goes on. If one hear this path of Bhagavatam, this message of Bhagavatam, one be relieved from the miseries of this material existence. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you, glorious to Srila Prabhupada. That's so true that this um, opportunity to rise out of the material world, <clears throat> even Yashodhanandana Prabhu, even when one is within the confines of the material body. Now, someone could say, how is that possible? that one could possibly transcend the material conception of his existence. Well, the formula is given in this process of bhakti yoga delivered by Srila Prabhupada. Just like uh, Prabhupada gives the example of the coconut and then the coconut uh, pulp within the coconut. So a person is within the confines of the material body, but at the same time through the process of devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, if one sincerely takes that up, he becomes detached from material life. He has no longer any interest in it. For example, Jayananda Prabhu. Jayananda Prabhu joined the movement in the early years when Prabhupada was launching Krishna consciousness globally. And he took up the process of devotional service without any personal motive, without any personal desire. He was completely, let's use the term, surrendered to Prabhupada's mission. When he got some money, what did he do with his money? He gave all his inheritance to Prabhupada to print books. He worked tirelessly uh, <clears throat> to serve Prabhupada's mission. And when you read his history, you can get more details. And uh, I had the chance in 1976 to go to the New York Rathiatra where he had <clears throat> built the carts with Murli Krishna, a friend of mine. And <clears throat> this was coming to the end of this particular life that he was in, in this body. He was suffering from a serious disease. But he did not complain. He did not uh, show any signs of complaint. <clears throat> but he always stayed fixed on the transcendental platform of service to the pure devotee. And in this way, when he left his body, Prabhupada, and you can tell the story, acknowledged that Jayananda had achieved emancipation, liberation from this material world. Even before leaving his body, he had become liberated. Excuse me for one second. So this is the condition <clears throat> that we are in, is we are conditioned by material life. We think we're the body. We think we'll find happiness with material life. And we've all 
us older people in this body understand we've been on a journey of uh, time trying to understand what what the mission really is like a fish out of water the fish out of water is going to flap on the coast and then quickly die because it isn't its constitutional position and Prabhupada uses this example in terms of our constitutional position our constitutional position is not a resident of this world, although we're infatuated with it, so infatuated with it, it's extraordinary. <clears throat> and we see that every day, that people <clears throat> are thinking by the pursuit of material happiness, by the acquisition of material wealth, <clears throat> uh, by material fame, all these uh, decorations of dead body, decorations of a dead body, they think they'll be happy. It's like the mirage, Prabhupada uses the example, you showed Anandana Prabhu, of people in the material world. They're dreaming <clears throat> that these things will make them happy, this illusion. They're in the desert of material life. They're struggling to find happiness. They're thinking just like the person in the desert is desiring water because they're thirsty. They're looking for happiness <clears throat> or for, for sustenance, like the conditioned soul. And they imagine the, uh, <clears throat> the, the um, oasis where the water is. So when they get there, they find sand. They find sand. There's nothing there. So like that, you can get a big car. You can have a big mansion. You can have a, a big bank account. You can have all kinds of friends. You can think that you're the best, biggest and best person in the world. But in the end, zero. Prabhupada uses the example, Yashoda Prabhu, of <clears throat> so many zeros. Without Krishna, they have no value. You have to put Krishna first, and then all these zeros have value. And you become rich in Krishna consciousness. So <clears throat> this is the material world. And we have a wonderful opportunity, all of us, in the Prabhupada Disciples Association. Not these other groups. I'm sorry. This is a very fine line of understanding what is the position of Srila Prabhupada in his Vani incarnation. Very fine line. We're seeing that. Oh, so many different opinions. <clears throat> There's a group of people, they're claiming, <clears throat> oh yes, we're committed to, the in England, we're committed to the Sankirtan mission. Yet, they endorse Jaya Dwaita's Bhagavad Gita. What's this? Something that's been changed? And they're endorsing it? And they're saying, oh, you'll go back to Godhead if you work with us. There's a fine line here. You have to be specifically targeted to the Prabhupada legacy that he left with us because he lives in sound and in his books. And if those devotees <clears throat> take this up, our devotees take this up with uh, complete focus, they will not be disappointed in this lifetime or the next. I'm going to uh, refer again quickly to a verse that I read last week, but I wanted to read it again today because I found it so enlightening from the um, Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, <clears throat> uh, text 194 Anchalila chapter 4 text 194 <clears throat> the living entity who is subjected to birth and death 
when he gives up all material activities, dedicating his life to me for executing my order, and thus acts according to my direction. At that time, he reaches the platform of immortality. Satchitananda, immortality. And becomes fit to enjoy the spiritual bliss of exchange of loving mellows with me. Even while within this body, everyone. Purport from Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> this is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. 1129.34, at the time of initiation, a devotee gives up all his material conceptions, therefore being in touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <clears throat> he's situated on the transcendental platform, thus having attained knowledge in the spiritual platform. He always engages in the service of the spiritual body of Krishna. When one is freed from material connections in this way, his body immediately becomes spiritual and Krishna accepts his service. However, Krishna does not accept anything from a person with a material conception of life. When a devotee no longer has any desire for material sense gratification, in his spiritual identity, he engages in the service of the Lord for his dormant spiritual consciousness awakens. This awakening of spiritual consciousness makes his material, makes his body spiritual, and thus he becomes fit to render service to the Lord. Karmis may consider the body of a devotee material, but factually it is not, for a devotee has no conception of material enjoyment. If one thinks that the body of a pure devotee is material, he is an offender. That is a Vaishnava Aparad. In this connection, one should consult Srila Sanatana Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. So, it's easy here in this class, these readings and discussions, to understand <clears throat> that this is the greatest opportunity available to the conditioned soul in 2024 in this Kali Yuga. And we humbly pray for each of us to be able to take this seriously as much as we're capable of doing so. Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, please. I wanted to read a few uh some select passages of a conversation with Srila Prabhupada. Yes. This was in, uh, is a class that was given on April 27th, 1976. April 27th, 1976. It was a class on Madhya Lila, chapter 20, text number 98 to 102. This is a discussion which Srila Prabhupada and some guests pushed to Krishna. You had a question. Guest, is it possible to see Krishna right now? Hmm. Srila Prabhupada, why don't you see him in your back? Guest, but can't I just see him? Srila Prabhupada, well, you have no eyes to see. Guess, can I see him within? Srila Prabhupada, yes. Guess, why? Why is it not so easy? Why can't each one of us push to Krishna? Why is it so difficult to see Krishna? Why can't each of us see him within? Srila Prabhupada, you have to become qualified. Guess, why do I have to become qualified? Why? Srila Prabhupada, yes. Suppose if there's a big man before you in some big meeting, can you talk with him? Yes, why? Srila Prabhupada, no, no. First of all, answer this. Suppose there's a big meeting going on and some big man is present. Suppose the president is there. Can you talk with him? Why? Why you cannot talk? 
for talking, we think you require some qualification. It is not that it's so cheap that you can talk with Krishna immediately. Atasra Krishna Namadi Nababed Grayamindriyai Sivan Mukehi Jivadu Swayame Vaspuratiadaha Cited from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhyalila 17, 136. So if you accept Krishna as the Supreme Lord, then you have to qualify yourself to talk with him. Yes, by his grace, Krishna will show himself to you. Srila Prabhupada, yes, if you read Krishna book, and if you believe, then you see Krishna. He is not different from the book. Yes, but we could read words till the cows come home. What good is that going to do? Devotee, you have to accept what you read. You can't read with argumentative attitude. Or you can't ask questions in an argumentative attitude. You'll never learn. Yes, I can only accept what I experience. Srila Prabhupada, what is your experience? Yes, my experience is that I have seen Krishna with my own eyes. Srila Prabhupada, you have seen? Yes, yes. Srila Prabhupada, that is very nice. The devotees laugh. Yes, it hasn't been hard. Prapa, that is nice. Yes, I've not had to read any words. Srila Prabhupada, oh, then you are perfect. Devotees, are there any other questions, please? Srila Prabhupada, sit down, you are perfect. <laughs> so a very interesting exchange with Srila Prabhupada. Anyone can see this. This is from the... Uh, PrabhupadaBooks.com on April 27th, 1976. Very interesting that Srila Prabhupada said, yes, if you read Krishna book, and if you believe, then you see Krishna. He's not different from the book. The Krishna book is the description of the transcendental activities of the pastimes of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. The pro point that Prabhupada is, is making and that you're bringing up is that one should be qualified in devotional service to have the opportunity to be in association with the pure devotee spiritual master and with uh, Krishna. It is not something cheap. Uh, if you want to be cheated, Prabhupada said, there'll be so many people that will cheat you in the Kali Yuga, the cheaters and the cheated. But if you want <clears throat> Krishna consciousness, sometimes you may not want to hear what's being said. Sometimes you may not want to uh, do the things you're told to do. But if you accept those things <clears throat> on the platform of understanding that this will qualify you to go back home, back to Godhead, then you'll take them up with enthusiasm because you know that that is the highest reward. Just look at this body, everyone. Is the, Prabhupada said, this is not the place for a gentleman. Look, we're still walking. But people, a lot of people are in wheelchairs. A lot of people are in hospital beds, hooked up to different mechanisms, trying to keep themselves alive. Millions <clears throat> of them. Yoshoda was mentioning about the suffering of people in war where they're being um, uh, starved to death, where they're being uh, attacked and bombed and killed, the men, the women, the children. Is this heaven? This is the Kali Yuga. It is not a fit place 
For a gentleman, Prabhupada told us. And now, all of us, we have an opportunity. Dharma Bhavana, we have an opportunity to take this mission up without any hesitation. And I'd like to ask you, maybe you could comment on this today's discussion for everybody in the global participation. Hare Krishna, thank you. I really like it when you call on the more advanced devotees to speak. But I, I did have something to add. There's some um, in uh, Adi Leela chapter 13, text number 32, there's a very interesting forefort. And I was just uh, imagining how in the future, devotees will look back and see in the year 2024, how did the Vaishnav devotees utilize the internet for communication, uh, for preaching and reading the scriptures? And historically, we're kind of in the middle of when Prabhupada came to America and what the future will be like. We don't exactly know, but but here we're all, um, uh, we're, we're trying to follow the Shukta Vairagya using, utilizing airplanes and internet, whatever we can. So it says in this verse here, um, again, text 32, the what is it? Movement Where is it from? Where is it from? Adi Leela, Adi Leela, chapter 13, uh, text 32. It's chapter part of 13. the advent. Yeah, part of the um, description of the advent of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. It says the Sankirtan movement went on from one part of the town to another as the Lord wandered everywhere performing kirtan. In this way, he inundated the whole world by distributing love of Godhead. And now the corporate. One may raise the question how all three worlds became inundated with love of Krishna since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed kirtan only in the Navadvip area. The answer is the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. The entire cosmic manifestation results from the Lord's first setting it in motion. Similarly, since the Sankirtan movement was first set in motion 500 years ago by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire that it spread all over the universe, the Krishna consciousness movement in continuity of that same motion is now spreading all over the world. And in this way, it will gradually spread all over the universe. With the spread of the Krishna consciousness movement, everyone will merge in an ocean of love of Krishna. So I thought that the concept of spreading all over the universe, I can't imagine that, but it's what it says here. And if somebody a devotee you know, 100 years ago or whatever, way back couldn't imagine what it meant the Lord Chaitanya's mission was spread all over planet Earth in every town and village. It wasn't imaginable. So, it, but again, this is in, there, in our books in a, as a prediction, as an explanation. So we, we can imagine how beautiful the future is going to be. And also the devotees here who are listening to the classes, taking part in the reading discussions, uh, the younger devotees will use this training, hopefully, to uh, do the same thing we're doing now so that the whole mission will go on when those of us who are very old won't be able to do it anymore. That's all. Thank you. How do you both? Yes, Prabhu, and that's very true. It's <clears throat> like we were discussing in the program, the position we're in is a very blessed one. All of us, the new people, the older senior members, and this opportunity that we have is very difficult to comprehend. It's a very special because if you think about it we're insignificant and krishna is the creator of everything and we have a conduit a connection to krishna through ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupada as long as we follow precisely this path of devotional service. So it's it's a very special opportunity, everyone. And I'm glad that everyone in our group is, is appreciating it.
We may not be a big number, but we're a good number. And this number will grow in due course. We have our friend Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, Neela Shama, in Miami, Florida. It's also hot Krishna, there. Prabhu. Prabhu, yeah. please, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Uh, you, you know, you, yes, uh, as Dharma Bhavana Prabhu said, that uh, the internet, the, um, the technology has brought us to a different level of association. And through this group, this very group, we have seen that participants are coming as far way back from Japan, all the way down to Latin America, uh, all over the world, where this holy name is being chanted in every city, every town, which was incomprehensible in the 60s and the 70s. You know, so that is one advantage which we are seeing. The disadvantage as a preacher comes about is because if you look at an average jiva who is in uh, entangled in this material world, he has become very impatient. Think about how faster computers, faster cars, faster planes, uh, everything, and, and this Google generation where every, every information is on your fingertips. All you got to do is just move your fingers and you get your information, and everything is instantaneous. Everything is got done now. If anybody wants um, uh, a brief, uh, what you call, uh, uh, go ahead. I think we lost your connection. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, everybody who is uh, what you call uh, getting instantaneous fame, instantaneous everything, and for them to show them the path of bhakti, which will is an endeavor. When we say endeavor, means what? It is a long, slow, struggling process. It is difficult for them to understand that. It is difficult for them to comprehend it when everything is so instantaneous. Hence, the question, I want to see Krishna now. Show me Krishna now. If you can't show me Krishna now, he does not cease to exist. And the whole process of bhakti is very, very slow. So, especially for Prabhu, like you, when you move from Toronto and you're preaching in Mexico, you can see the difference in the people where people are much slower. People accept the slowness. They accept the endeavor where it is a lot of hard working. But when you go to a big city where a lot of technology is there, where everything is moving on a fast pace, and to them, you tell them you need to slow down and involve in bhakti, it is a difficult concept to comprehend. I wanted your two viewpoints about, uh, two cents about this viewpoint from you and Yashodhanandan Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Okay, we're moving to the end, but <clears throat> Prabhu, this, <clears throat> getting back to what we were talking about, uh, when you get mercy by the grace of Krishna and the spiritual master, this becomes the greatest opportunity for you, Nilesh, and for Yashoda, for Sean, for Goramani, for Vinkat, for Krishna Kata, for Radharani, all of us, we should just feel that we are blessed. Yes, the world is moving along very quickly. And I'm going to mention just briefly that um, <clears throat> actually life is very short. It is. It appears to be a long time according to the karmi perception. But before you know it, for one who is born, death is certain. It comes faster than you can imagine, as you both, as we all know. No one ever thought when you were 15, oh, you would be 76. No one ever thought that when you were 22, that when you were 76, it would be harder to get up. Just to walk, a lot of people have to be in wheelchairs and use canes and all kinds of things. So this illusion that we have a long time, no. We have no time. And death can come at any moment, Nilesh Shama. And therefore it's critical that we all come together in a prudent manner and work cooperatively to spread this mission. It was discussed 
discussing this with Yashoda Nandana Prabhu. This word cooperation is almost non-existent. <clears throat> the position of narcissism, the position of selfishness, the position of paranoia, my wife, my money, my house, my car, my social position, my name, my fame, these contaminate all of us. And we have to pray to the Lord to please let this leave us so that we can selflessly, without any hesitation, join this mission and push on to protect the legacy of Srila Prabhupada before we leave this body. We'll get a last comment from Yashoda Nandana Prabhu this morning at Bhagavatam class because we're reaching the end of the program. Yashoda Nandana, please. Thank you. There's some very important points that are being raised here by Dr. Nilesh. In other words, if somebody wants to engage in devotional service, if somebody is serious about Srila Prabhupada's teachings, the first point that one has to do is open his ears and open his mind. One has to be willing to hear submissively the message given by Srila Prabhupada. Now, this is a very important point because many people claim to be devotees. They claim to follow Srila Prabhupada, but they don't want to hear. One has to be willing to hear the message given by the Acharya. There's a famous lecture given by Srila Prabhupada on the occasion of the Avyasa Puja of His Divine Grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. This was given way back in 1934, where Prabhupada is describing the exalted position of the Acharya the exalted position of the pure devotee. So one has to develop that taste to hear. And the way we develop a taste to hear is by hearing Prabhupada's lectures, by reading his original unrevised books, non-adulterated books, then one can understand very nicely. It's not very complicated. Prabhupada's process, the path that he has given, the bhakti path, the bona fide path of devotional service is not very complicated. We have to develop the eagerness to hear. Mulya in Sanskrit means price. There is a price. The reason people misunderstand and have misconceptions is because they don't devote the time to hear. They're not willing to pay the price. Prophet is given the process. He's given what is the price. Simply, we have to adopt the process properly. Then one will gradually understand. Just like we were reading this conversation with Srila Prabhupada, where Prabhupada explains that if you read Krishna book and you believe what is written there, then you will directly experience Krishna. It's not like something will, will manifest himself by some miracle process. There will be a process. It's not complicated. The process is there. The system is there. Simply, we have to devote a little bit of time every single day to hear Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, chant Hare Krishna, offer the boga, offer the foodstuff, to Krishna in the proper manner with love and devotion, then there will be a result. Not very complicated, very easy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare <clears throat> And we trust that everyone feels transcendentally blissful this morning or this evening, wherever you are. Vijaya Pandit in Italy, Sean Evans in Michigan, Aprakrita in Montreal, Vinkat Bhatta in Bangalore, Gormani in Mayapur, and all the devotees that join us throughout the world for these discussions. Because the goal of these discussions is to inspire each of us to feel the ecstasy 
of transcendental association of bona fide disciples of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This is Guru Shastra Sadhu. The Guru is A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The Shastras are his unadulterated books. <clears throat> and the Sadhus are all of you who are committed to serving the spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, every day of your life in his unadulterated mission to bring the blessings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the conditioned souls throughout the world that are suffering due to ignorance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. We'll see everyone on Wednesday for our Chaitanya Chartam Rita reading, all glories to the Sankirtan mission. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Yataita Radhadhar Shri Vashadi Gaurata Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Yataita Gadadha Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Bhunda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda
Haribo. Let us offer our respectful obeisances to all the assembled devotees here at the Prabhupada Disciples Association. Vanchakalpa, Trubyascha, Kutsindu, Kutsindu, Evacha, Patita Anam, Pavanebio, Vaishnavebio, Namo Nama. Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Thank you. Sri Guru, Sri Juta, Padakamalam, Sri Guru, Vaishna, Vangsha, Sri Rupam, Sagrajatam, Sahagana, Raghunathanitam Tang Sajivam Shaddaitam Shabadhutam Parijana Sahitam